Defense and diplomacy will top the agenda when U.S. President Joe Biden and Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida meet on Wednesday in the first such bilateral summit in Washington since 2015. Focusing on deterrence amid China's rapidly expanding military footprint. The two leaders will then join a trilateral summit on Thursday with Philippine President Ferdinand Marcos JNR as the Biden administration works to bolster its network of Indo-Pacific economic and security agreements amid growing tension in the waters around the Philippines. What you will see is a strong string of support and solidarity among our three leaders for a common vision of a South China Sea that is governed by international law, Mira Rep Hooper. White House Senior Director for East Asia and Oceania said on Tuesday, We are continuing to innovate the groupings with whom we are working closely, adding to the fit-for-purpose latticework that we are using throughout the Indo-Pacific. She added, A significant part of Wednesday's U.S.-Japan summit is likely to center on streamlining the two respective military bureaucracies so that the Pentagon and Japan's self-defense forces can react quickly and efficaciously in the event of a conflict with China or North Korea. Our two countries are working together with a clearer understanding of the importance of closer coordination as we establish that joint operational command, said Shigeo Yumoda. Japan's ambassador to the U.S. at the Center for Strategic and International Studies, a Washington think tank. The two leaders were basically on the same page, Yomada added. That page, however, is unlikely to include much detail anytime soon, as the Allies struggle to reorganize entrenched defense systems built over decades. A central problem, say analysts is that the military structure in neighboring South Korea is headed by a foster general, while American Army, Naval, Air Force and Marine Forces in Japan are headed by three-star commanders. Tokyo is pushing for Japan to play a more prominent role, pointing to the confusion and turf battles that could ensue were a conflict to erupt. The Allies are also likely to discuss bolstered air power cooperation. Co-production of defense equipment and defense industrial policy coordination, said size analyst Christopher Johnstone. While economics are not expected to dominate bilateral discussions, the Biden administration's decision, announced before the summit, to block Nippon Steel's $41 billion U.S. dollar takeover bid for U.S. steel on national security grounds has added friction. All deliverables are likely to have a security component, and they'll underplay Nippon Steel, said Jeremy Chan, a geopolitical analyst with the Eurasia Group. That's such an ill-timed, tenured move. Rom Emanuel, U.S. ambassador to Japan and a Chicago native and former mayor, counted on Monday that too much has been made of the Nippon Steel decision given growing bilateral ties. As we would say in Chicago, you got a chill. Dot. The US Japan summit will include one on one talks, a joint press conference, a state dinner, a speech before the US Congress, and meetings between Kishida and Japanese companies in North Carolina. The Trilateral Leaders Summit on Thursday will include talks and a three way press conference. The administration's latticework system meant to deter China encompasses a variety of initiatives targeting the Indo-Pacific region. One includes Japan and the Quadrilateral Security Dialogue of which the US, India and Australia are also members, while others include the Japan-South Korea-US Trilateral, the AUKUS Alliance. A pact comprising Australia, Britain and the US, and the 14-nation Indo-Pacific Economic Framework led by the US. We also face the reality that China is increasing its presence in the region. Kishida said in Tokyo before his arrival, adding that other Asian countries like the Philippines expected Japan to increase its presence and provide an attractive alternative.
The visit to Washington marks the latest high-profile global meeting for the Japanese Prime Minister. Last year, apart from meeting Biden twice in person, Kishida attended the NATO and European Union summits as well as traveled to war at Ukraine. China's foreign ministry on Monday said any defense cooperation should promote regional peace. We oppose cobbling together exclusive groupings and stoking bloc confrontation in the region. Added Ministry Spokeswoman Mao Ning In taking a leading role in many regional minilateral arrangements, Tokyo has reversed a decades-long record of cautious defense and diplomatic policies. Japan recently announced it would double its 2022 defense budget by 2027 at counter-strike capability, lift its cap on defense exports and stabilize historically prickly relations with Seoul. There's been a strategic rethinking about how great the risks were in the region and how implicated Japan is in any contingency, said Chan they can't avoid being involved. So they might as well lean in. Adding to Tokyo's many hats, Oko's members signaled on Monday they would likely involve Japan in future projects, potentially including artificial intelligence. Quantum technology, hypersonic capabilities, and electronic warfare. My sense is that there is not yet a consensus among the three Oko's partners on what that project is, Johnstone said. Kishida hopes to deepen security cooperation in such areas as defense equipment and technology. Bilateral progress also could emerge in civilian and defense space projects, said Sai's senior fellow Kerry Bingdin. Including the possible involvement of a Japanese astronaut in a future Artemis moon landing mission. Bingdin further expected greater collaboration in missile warning, hypersonic weapons, satellite architectures and data sharing. Even as Japan takes a more forceful posture in the South China Sea, South Korea is likely to hang back despite its new trilateral pact with Washington and Tokyo. Analysts said, in view of its economic dependence on China, nor is Pyongyang likely to be a particular focus of this week's meetings. I'm not expecting any sort of North Korea-specific announcements to come out tomorrow, said Rep Hooper but we are excited about continuing to further the progress that we make on regional missile defense integration more broadly. The Philippines, meanwhile, is hoping to bolster support from Washington and Tokyo this week, as well as Vietnam, Taiwan, Indonesia and Malaysia further afield, as it encounters rising pressure from Beijing over contested waters in the South China Sea. On March 5, the Chinese Coast Guard and Chinese Maritime Militia collided with the Philippine Coast Guard. And on March 23, Chinese water cannons damaged a Philippine supply vessel and injured some of crew. The leaders of all three countries are now seeking to quickly institutionalize a new coordinated approach to regional security, said Haro Ingram, Philippines country representative with the nonprofit United States Institute of Peace. But the Marcos administration correctly recognizes that it cannot solely rely on its two closest friends to deal with the challenges of the next decade. In recent years, Tokyo has provided defense aid, patrol boats and radar systems to Manila as the two sides negotiate an agreement to train troops in each other's country. On Sunday, in a clear message ahead of the summit, the three countries, along with Australia, conducted joint naval exercises in the disputed South China Sea. This week the US and Tokyo are also expected to offer more economic aid to Manila, potentially involving semiconductor and other high-tech manufacturing, green energy and mining. In a show of support for Tokyo's growing role in the Indo-Pacific, the Senate Foreign Relations Committee on Tuesday introduced a bipartisan resolution recognizing Japan's pledge to increase military spending, its support for Ukraine and its leadership in the Group of Seven Nations. Our alliance with Japan is fundamental, say Republican Senator Mitt Romney of Utah, who chairs the Senate Subcommittee on East Asia.
At a time of growing military aggression by China in the Taiwan Strait and the South China Sea, the United States must remain committed to strengthening diplomatic ties and security cooperation. But officials and analysts acknowledge that much of the material making up the lattice work was politically vulnerable. Kishida could face a snap election in September amid a funding scandal in his ruling party. Marcos wants to show voters that his tough China stance yields economic and political benefits. And Biden faces a tough re-election campaign ahead of November against former U.S. President Donald Trump, who is notoriously wary of international cooperation. Springtime may see a blossoming U.S.-Japan alliance, said Miria Solis, a Brookings Institution senior fellow. But cooperative endeavors will be tested by the winds of political change come fall. Emmanuel said there was no denying some short-term exposure. Roots are being put down, he said. But it's early enough that unless you're building on it constantly, it will atrophy. And we all know that.